I want to talk about the term spiritual awakening. It's such a buzzword, but how does one awaken the spirit? And is this something that everyone should do? What is the purpose of spiritual awakening? A real spiritual awakening is awakening to the wisdom of what is it that I need to do to become a better human being and where am I moving to as opposed to I'm just going to sit there and meditate in a yogic position and all my problems are going to disappear and I'm going to be perfect because I'm already perfect and why do I need to do anything which to me is laziness. This is episode 153. Hello and welcome to my podcast show, Your Coach, Helen Yuskovic. This is the Smart Chat series. This is an episode where I chat to an expert or a thought leader from around the world on a certain topic. Hi guys, welcome back to the show. This is part two with Inner Segal and this conversation was so amazing that we just couldn't stop talking. So here is the second part. If you haven't listened to the first part, go back to the last episode, have a listen and then come and join me on this chat. Well, let's dive back into this conversation. I want to talk about the term spiritual awakening. It's such a buzzword going mm-hmm. around the traps. But how does one awaken the spirit? And is this something that everyone should do? What is the purpose of spiritual awakening? Yeah, there's a little cringeworthy factor there. But but I feel like for me, when I talk about this from my perspective, there's a lot of people, again, talking about higher self as if it's a given that the higher part of yourself, which is what essentially what they're saying by spiritual awakening in some way, that it's awakened. But from my study and research and understanding, it isn't awakened in most people. And it's actually one of the things that people don't understand is the difference between the soul and the spirit. And the soul, if we start to look at it, is more of an very subjective part of you it connects to the astral body my personality who I think I am it's very unique to me in this particular lifetime so the soul actually when people say I have an old soul it's not quite like that they have parts of their soul that are old and parts that are completely new but there this is the part that their soul is created a new for each lifetime because it's a new time, new body, new personality, new family, so to speak. It has to align and the soul has different levels. So it has the mental level, the emotional level, and it it has at the moment we're in a time of a consciousness soul where the wisdom needs to come out. But that wisdom comes out when I decide that I'm going to be wise, you know, when I decide that I'm going to actually behave in a way that is kind, loving, caring, thoughtful, giving, sometimes, you know, a little selfless without giving all of me away, but actually giving because I want to, because I'm going to give, not because I'm going to get something out of it. So, so much of awakening, what people are talking about, they just want to feel bliss, you know, without doing any work. They just want to kind of sit there and go, okay, I've awakened to bliss. But in reality, you know, I'm sorry to break this to people, the awakening of your higher self or your higher faculties happens from your behavior. It happens from selfless action as opposed to selfish action. It happens from kindness. It happens from lots of self-reflection, but not selfish type of self-reflection, but self-reflection that makes me go, oh, my God, you know, I could have spoken to my partner better. I could have been kinder. I could have been more loving. It's learning about yourself as a spiritual being. So the spirit in us is the eternal part of us. The soul gets sick because the soul's emotional, whereas the spirit never gets sick. And the spirit is the oldest part of you, essentially, because it's and it's connected to that higher divine essence. But between the spirit and the soul and the physical body, there's also a sense of I am, which is my unique self. And this my this unique self we call the ego and most people have seen the ego as the bad, you know, egotism, egotism. 
because when we first kind of got the ego, so to speak, we were egotistical, but part of what we're meant to be exploring and experiencing now is how do we become the, there's a higher part of the ego. How do we awaken the higher self and redeem the lower self within us? You know, how do we use that sense of I am to actually discern this is my lower self. I'm going to hold that, you know, and I'm going to work with that. That's the part of me that wants to, you know, rebel in ways that will be hurtful to others. I'm all for rebellion in good ways, <laughs> yeah. you know, but rebel, attack, be aggressive, hurt, because, you know, I think I'm going to gain something and I don't care. And part of the prob- the challenge, I should say, we're dealing with is when people think I have a one-life reality, this is where most of the lower self gets awakened because they kind of go, well, you know, I just want to party, make as much money as possible, have a good time and have fun and, you know, I'm not going to have another life so I might as well, you know, use it to the fullest and I don't care about, you know, hurting people, hurting the planet, whatever it is I'm doing, it doesn't matter because I only care about myself because I only have one life. So it's very, very damaging. But when we start to understand that we have multiple Earth lives and, you you know, so when we only think that we have one life, we might go, well, I want to leave it to my children. If I have children, I want to leave a better world. But when we actually really get it, I have multiple Earth lives that I'm going to be coming back to this planet to leave them, you know. How do I want to treat people? If they understand karma, how do I want to... You know, what karma do I want to create with, you know, with other people? So if I'm going to meet them again, I, I might want to treat them better. <laughs> you know? yeah. So real spiritual awakening is awakening to the wisdom of what is it that I need to do to become a better human being and where am I moving to as opposed to I'm just going to sit there and, and meditate in a yogic position and All my problems are going to disappear and I'm going to be perfect because I'm already perfect. And why do I need to do anything, which to me is laziness. It's the height of laziness and new age misunderstanding. I don't have to do anything. Someone's going to do it for me and I'm going to be enlightened because somehow some magical genie is going to enlighten me, right, without me putting in any effort whatsoever. And this is really digressive as opposed to progressive yes so how does spiritual awakening change someone's life how if you know someone's on this journey how does one's life change and who's the best person to start this journey like who should start this journey well I think it changes everything in you because you start to when this journey starts you start to understand I am I'm visiting, I'm a visitor in this physical body. There's a lot of things that I can do on this physical earth that I can't do in a spiritual realm, but essentially I'm a spiritual being. And let me find out what it is that I can do here and can't do in a spiritual realm. I think that actually starting from, you know, you start to become curious. You don't take things so black and white and get so hung up on everything that's happening in the world you actually start to become more objective and you start to go look where you know what's happening right now so for example in understanding evolution we're in the time of evil right now this time of evil is actually about us facing our own shadow and making a decision and this is that enlightened you know thing that people misunderstanding the decision is am I going to go down the path of being a kind good beautiful loving caring human being or am I going to go down the path of being selfish aggressive looking only for power money hungry human being where am I going where am I at or am I going to numb and just not care and you know like am I going to be somebody who wants to learn and grow and and see challenges as opportunities where am I going to be and so I feel like when you kind of open up the spiritual perception you start to go there's so much more to this picture and 
you know, you're less likely to be depressed and hopeless because you're like, well, here's a spirit. This, this is an experiment. We're here as an experiment. And what is it that I can contribute? You know, that's my question to myself pretty much daily. You know, with everything that's going on, with both the challenging and, you know, the really shadowy aspects of what, what's happening, I'm like, what is in my power? What is in my power to impact, influence, help, transform, change? And have I done everything in my power to do that um, in order to help guide and inspire essentially as many people as possible to move into the direction where I feel we're, you know, which would be beautiful, a healthy, a loving direction to move in for humanity. And so you start to understand it. And this is where real oneness awakens. It's like we, we are so connected. We're not one in the sense of the oneness we used to experience previously was actually being part of something called the group soul. We we're part of the group mentality. Now we need to be separate, individualized, and then come back with an individual wisdom and perspective and actually go, but you and I are connected because we're a soul and a spirit being and we are creating either beautiful karmic experiences or terrible ones or you know we're, we're creating something beautiful for this planet or we're destroying it practicality and understanding of that so who should do it i just think honestly i, I really think that anyone who starts to become aware that there's more to it and then really the biggest thing to me is how can you inspire your children right, from an early age, because whenever there is evolution, there's also devolution. So beings who don't, people, beings who don't want you to move, to grow. So right now, because we're in the time of evil, we're seeing this preaching of one life reality at schools, there's nothing more, and and we're seeing this rise of depression like never before and anxiety and self-harm. And this is because... The spirituality is being taken away from these children and by bringing it back as a parent, you know, or as a person that can connect to other children um, in a kind way, again, we're seeing such damage to the children, you know, obviously happening in so many ways. And it's like, as a parent, my job is not to just protect my child. My job is to help my child to understand how to deal with challenges in life, you know, how to deal with things that come up, how to be independent. Yeah, definitely. Wow. So spiritual awakening sounds like living in the present moment, which a lot of people that do have depressive disorders or anxious disorders uh, fail to do uh, for whatever reason. So I highly recommend beginning this journey uh, to anyone that's listening and we'll put all of the links up for inner, uh, on the show notes so that if you don't know where to start, just start with inner. So she's got so <laughs> many amazing tools, tips, tricks, audio books, courses, and stuff that you can get your hands on, but inner, it's time for your next curveball. Are you ready to play? Yep. I love playing. I am a mindset coach and I would love to ask you, how do you move through different mindsets. So if you're in a negative mindset, what do you do to get yourself back into a positive mindset? Because I've trained myself for so long, I don't really stay in negative mindsets for long. So if I'm in in that space, depending what it's about, usually there's a part of me that is searching for a solution as, you know, and going, okay, there must be there's something that I can do. What can I do? You know, like how can I research whatever it is that I don't have or don't understand? And um, how can I, I think one of my, I have questions for myself. How can I grow from this? What's the blessing in this situation that I'm not seeing right now? And essentially like what is it that I have, on a, on, you know, an awareness of, in myself that I can move from the victim because I, I recognize that I'm in being, I'm either in the victim of the child perspective 
that I can move out of. So I always find that either I ask a question and start to move out of it or I'm doing or I kind of go, wow, I'm really exhausted. I need to do you know, a process. What is the right process for it? Or I need to call someone. Sometimes that's what I do. I'll I'll be in a mindset where I'm like, I'm just, I really don't know what to do. I'll call a person who will have probably the opposite perspective to me, usually. And the other thing that I often do, if I'm really kind of at a loss, because I'm being bombarded from everybody, I'll pray. I'll actually, you know, sit there. I have specific prayers that I do and I'll sit there and I'll pray. Usually after doing the prayer, I will feel like something is moving or shifting or I'm being, or or I feel like I have a very strong belief in, like I said, higher beings. And so I, I read quite a bit about the angel, again, not from a new agey perspective, but from actually studying this in a deep way. And I might say, look, I really don't know what to do right now. I need help. I need guidance show me what to do and you know so many times in my life when I've done that something incredible would show up like absolutely mind-blowing maybe I could just share one little one that please so um when I was actually writing the secret language of your body I had this really interesting experience where I was wanting at the back of the book you have the images of the body right of the male and the, the female Uh, for people to just be aware of where the organs are in the body because lots of people don't know. It was really important that that for me that I would have this and I spoke to the publisher that I had at the time and he said, look, it's very expensive to do that. So if you want to do it, you've got to do it yourself and pay for it. So I was like, okay, fine, I'll do that. And I said to him, you know, can you recommend somebody? And he did. And this person that he recommended at the time was – was an artist, but essentially it, it, we had a six week period where he had to do the, these pictures. And I just kept asking and he wouldn't send it to me and wouldn't send it to me to a point where we had about a week left and I was starting to get pretty upset. Anyway, finally, I remember it was, I was with some of my friends and my ex partner called me and he said, look, you better come home because we've got the pictures. And I said, oh, how are they? And he's like, you better come home. (laughs) Anyway, I came home and I saw these pictures and we were meant to be going on a holiday the next day. So it was, I think it was Saturday night and we were going the next day, which was Sunday. When I came home and I saw the pictures, I I was pretty upset because I was like, look, how, how is this possible? I can draw better than this. You know, I could, I, I could have drawn, it, it, it looked like a five year old had drawn the pictures. So I, I started to feel anger and upset and I actually went upstairs to my office and I was sitting there and just trying to calm myself down. And I was like, okay, I don't know what to do, but I know that the high part of myself or the angel knows to show me what to do. And so I literally sat there for five minutes until I felt really calm. I actually heard this voice that said, go downstairs and turn the computer on. So I went downstairs, I turned the computer on. Then I heard this uh, putting medical artist into Google. It's never even occurred to me that there's even such a thing as a medical artist in my life. So I put, I wrote medical artist and this page came up. And so I, I then called my ex partner and I was like, this, I was like, this is what I want. I want this. And he said, yeah, but it's too late. You know, I'm like, I don't believe in too late. And he's like, this person's probably in the US. I'm like, well, let's look it up. Anyway, so we were looking it up and we found the address and this person, this man was leaving five minutes away from me. So I was like, Hey, let's call him. So my partner was calling him and he was like, aha, uh-huh. he got on to him and he said, hi, you know, can we, we've got this issue. And then I was like, look, like, let me just give me the phone. <laughs> and, I was, and I said, Hey, this is a bit of an emergency. I know it's Saturday night and like, you're probably going out. And he's like, yeah, I am going out. And I was like, but we leave five minutes away from you. Because it's an emergency, would you mind just coming by? And he was like, 
okay, I think he heard the intensity in my voice. So I don't know, about 15 minutes later, he was at my door and I said to him, look, this is what I need. I'm desperate. You know, what, what do you, can you do this? And he said, well, yeah, but it's going to take a month. And I was like, no, you have about seven days. And he said, oh, no, no, it's impossible. And I was like, me finding you is impossible. The fact that I found you, everything is possible. And I was like, trust me, you can do it. And, and you know, he did it within seven days. So the, that was one of countless experiences that I've had where I've kind of gone, look, I don't know, but there is a higher part of me or part, you know, higher guide that I have that does. Yes. Wow. Do you ever freak out your partners with your, <laughs> <laughs> your experiences? Do they look at you like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> Probably at the beginning. <laughs> but I think, yeah. You know. <laughs> I swear, yeah, because I was just thinking if I was in a relationship and I had your gift, I'm sure that they would look at me like, who are you? <laughs> You're like a guru. <laughs> Amazing. Let's talk about ancestral healing. What is ancestral healing? I know you mentioned past lives. Are they related? And how can these patterns show up in our lives so that if the listeners are listening and they're like, wow, maybe this has something to do with ancestral healing, what should we watch out for? Well, ancestral healing is very connected to our family. And it's really interesting because it's, it's not necessarily even the, I mean, there could be past life connections, but the more of a connection is if we understood this on a bigger scale, we would realize that before the soul comes into this reality, the soul actually checks out all your ancestors <laughs> for, you know, connected to this body. <laughs> wow. Yes, yeah, so that's how you can have a link to told them uh, or to different ones and even if you've never met them and also what happens is that essentially if we're talking about other lives that whatever you haven't worked on in other lives you essentially you always bring back not all of it in each life because every too much but parts of it that are relevant to that particular life to the family you're going to have to the people you're going to can connect to and so often you will have this bond with your family well, partly because whoever's in your family you've known in other lives it's not possible to have family without it so there's things that you are really you've got to work with that are very connected and intertwined and but essentially if we're kind of limiting the look of it we're, we're looking at what patterns have we observed in our family members mm -hmm. that um, were potentially detrimental. We can also look at the good ones, you know, and appreciate those, but potentially detrimental that our family members did never worked through. Mm. So, for instance, a lot of people have parents or grandparents or great-grandparents who weren't through the war or through, like, horrific traumas. And then just froze those parts of themselves and probably eventually got cancer or something or some kind of disease. And they don't realize that whatever that person in your family that you're very connected to through the astral body, through the soul, through the etheric body, that person that you're deeply connected to, essentially they didn't do any of the work. So what that shows up in the next person is as a, either a potential trait, like um, an emotional or mental trait or even a physical problem. So we see a lot of people, like I was speaking to my mom the other day and she, so her parents went through the war like horrific trauma yeah. where her mother literally was 13 and her and my grandmother's mother was psychic and actually said to her look she had eight children she said you're the only one who's going to survive through the war and you and your father 
and my great yeah, my grandma was thirteen, and she was preparing her to survive for four years on her own, or well, through the war. And my grandmother's life was saved because her mother kind of pushed her over the fence and was shot at the same time as she was doing it. So, you know, just horrific trauma. And so my grandmother had this, she couldn't give love to my mother. It was just, you know, too hard for her with everything that went on. And that caused my mom to have variety of issues that are showing up now in her life more than so that's what people don't understand it'll show up later yes. you know and a lot of it is connected to lack of self-love because she didn't know how to because her mother didn't wow. and so this you know and so when we start to unravel things it's like for example my mom's has cysts that show up in different parts of her body and it's like the cysts are the dreams that both my mom, my grandmother had that never eventuated, that are holding that pain and the trauma there and all of the tears that my grandmother never cried, they're, they're in the cysts, you know. And I remember I said to my grandmother before she died, I, I had a very strong relationship with her and I was like, look, we need to work with some feelings here. But she it's like she couldn't really understand it. So I would say to her, like, you've got to you've got to feel your feelings. You've got to let them out. And my aunt told me literally two days before my grandmother died, she saw her crying and she said to her, Why are you crying? And my grandmother said, I don't feel like I've got much time and left and Ina told me it was something I needed to do. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh my Lord. So in his book, guys, The Secret Language of the Body is something that everyone should have as like their pocket handbook. Just because you mentioned cysts and what they mean, this book breaks down everything when it comes to physical ailments down to a T. So if this is inspiring you to think about, oh, wow, I have this. Oh, wow, I've had this issue for the last 20 years of my life. Maybe perhaps look into uh, some of Inna's work. Uh, Inna, what steps should one take if these symptoms and signs are prominent in their life? And, you know, we talk about past lives and people causing traumas and stuff for us. How can you forgive when you don't want to? And what, what are these steps to move through ancestral healing? I think that it's not about even forgiving at times. I think it's about understanding. The first thing is if I can understand, I can have compassion and I can start to let go because not everything and not everybody can be forgiven, right, as a word that – it's kind of like, oh, wow, you know, I am free of it. Because sometimes I find, you know, you can't because it's just too horrific, you know, the behavior or something that's happening. But you can you can understand. And in understanding, especially when we're looking at family lines and some of the behaviors that people have, said, have done, you can start to have compassion. And, you know, even in um, understanding modern spirituality, there is – the section in the book, the last section where I guide people through processes and, um, and, you know, and I've got a lot of online courses that guide you more specifically as well. If you wanted to have a look at it, it's like we're, we're looking at connecting with our ancestors and potentially expressing how we feel, right, expressing and hearing them or hearing an aspect of maybe it's their archetypal self that gives us or how we how we would imagine them that gives us an understanding of their suffering, of their struggle, where we can, again, not necessarily forgive, but we can let go, Right. Mm -hmm. And in letting go and having compassion and some kind of a connection and communication, we can appreciate and in there, there, there lies wisdom. And in wisdom, there's healing. 
that occurs where it's like I've, you know, I've transformed the pain into wisdom essentially. Wow. That's so amazing. I love everything about this and I love that you said that, you know, some things aren't forgivable but coming from a sense of understanding and some of the key things that I got away from you today is about how much more aware we can become and how much more present we can become in order for us to feel a lot more fulfilled and happier in our life. So I just want to say thank you for your time and your wisdom and all of the amazing things that you're doing in the world. You are helping and serving so many people and you should just be so bloody proud of yourself. But before we go, Inna, is there anything else that you'd like to share? It's always so much. (laughs) I love this deeper conversation. I feel like whatever situation somebody's in, and I know lots of people are in really challenging situations right now, and, you know, there's days, honestly, I feel like I'm bombarded by people. Sometimes they're people from my own family. Sometimes they're just people that, you know, need help and support of my students or, you know, somebody who's come across my work and, you know, there's a lot of really difficult and painful and challenging scenarios that are happening. And the idea when you talk about the present is to actually keep coming back and going, can I, how can I leave this minute, this five minutes, this hour in the best way that I can, even though I might be exhausted, even though I might be really challenged, how do I, focus on allowing the so to speak the victorious the the part of me that is the wise part the higher part of me to lead me right now where you know I'm tired and I'm exhausted and my inner child's taken over and I just can't cope how can I work on strengthening myself to cope just a little bit today and then how can I as you just said that recognition how can I acknowledge myself that I coped with something really challenging today and actually take a moment and go wow I'm proud of myself I was able to deal with this and unhold it and because when you acknowledge essentially you will then start to move towards strengthening yourself And one of the things I love to do as well is I do this free online um, masterclasses. Sometimes it's once a year, sometimes it's several times a year, usually several. (laughs) And they're they're usually on my website, which is innersegal.com. And sometimes if you can get there live, it would be amazing. But if not, even just watching the replay and, and just a lot of the things that we've spoken about here, I kind of go on a little journey of connecting all the different energy bodies and ancestry and how it all works together and also giving people quite a deep process that they can experience of how I teach some of my deepest stuff because, you know, you can only do so much when I'm not kind of there to make sure that everyone's safe. But it gives you an opportunity to start to go on a little journey within yourself and strengthen yourself so that you can deal with life's challenges, which I believe is where we're at now. How good can we learn to deal with challenging scenarios? And also the last part of that is, uh, you know, the question you asked me actually about myself, you know, how do I, when things are overwhelming or too much, how do I deal with it? It's like, The idea is not that you're being perfect and that you're perfectly, you know, handling things straight off. The idea is when you get into the inner child, the wounded child, the the victim part of yourself, the saboteur part of yourself, how quickly can you recognize that you're in there, in that place and recover and find yourself in an empowered part of yourself working through something that is the biggest question not that you have to be perfect and and you know respond to every situation in an amazing way but more like can I remind myself and 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 not beat myself up but actually go oh this was challenging I dealt with it amazing not not straight away but I've done it and can I recognize myself wow what an amazing note to end on 
Inna, thank you so much. You mentioned that masterclass and I will definitely be putting all the links in the show notes, guys. So anytime you would like a little dose of Inna, you can go into the show notes and find her and stalk her online and Instagram or Facebook or on her website. Uh, and hopefully you start to fall in love with her just like I did. Thank you, Inna, again for your time today. Thank you so much. And that wraps up part two of our incredible, incredible podcast with the amazing Inna Segal. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I can't wait to see you next week. Thank you once again for showing up. Thank you once again for just putting yourself first and listening to some sort of self-development podcast. It really means a lot to me because this is something that I did to, to better myself, which is something that I still do to better myself. Come over to Instagram and let me know anything that you want to share. Bye. I hope you enjoy the show today. Remember, you can jump on my Instagram to let me know your thoughts on my podcast show. I would love to see it. And if you have a moment, please share a five-star review on Apple Podcasts so that we can help move the show along together. If you share a review, please send me a screenshot of it so that I can send you a thank you gift. Thank you for joining me on this week's episode. I'll see you next week for next week's episode. Bye.